Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again. Now, I've been soldering jewellery and repairing it for over 17 years and I like to think I'm fairly good at it. I've got a bit of experience and I've got some fantastic tools. But even so, when I'm working on repairs, there's a lot of challenges that I come up against. For example, gemstones, okay? If you're working on a vintage piece, it might have gemstones in it. You might have cabochons, amber, especially things like opals and emeralds, very sensitive, very delicate. And if you blast them with heat, you're gonna damage them. You might have surface treatments, gold plating, rhodium plating, oxidization, satin finishes, things like that. Again, they can all be damaged by excessive heat. Something that a lot of people don't realize is lobster clasps, bolt rings, things like that, even cufflinks, they've got little metal springs in. And if you get them too hot, you can damage the springiness in the steel and ruin the catch. You might have things like cold enamels, adhesives, all kinds of surface treatments, paint, anything. Uh, again, it's all going to be destroyed by excessive heat. And so all these present challenges to us when we're making repairs. Wouldn't it be great if you could just weld something with microscopic precision right at your fingertips without excessive heat? Well, thanks to some clever guys over at Sunstone Engineering, no, we can. So I'd like to show you my pulse light welder today. So come with me, let me show you what it is, how it works and what I do with it. Follow me. This is the Orion Impulse Micro Welder and this allows you to do just that. It comes with the control box which houses a touch screen and the controls. Here we have the welder unit itself with the tungsten electrode under here and in front of it the LCD screen. Note this is a new larger screen than the previous model. Now at first you might just think that this is just a tinted screen but it's much cleverer than that. This is an LCD screen referred to as the shutter. Just as the spark is created at the electrode, the screen darkens to shield your eyes from the flash and then instantly clears again to give you maximum view. And all this happens in a fraction of a second, so fast in fact that you can't actually see it. You might see professional car welders constantly lifting the goggles up and down. No need to do that here, the shutter does all that for you. So what this means is that you can work totally unrestricted with whatever headgear and visual aids you want. So glasses or in my case an Optivisor. Setup is really simple and only takes a few seconds to get you up and going. Everything plugs into the main control unit at the back here. The large black hose is pre-connected, that goes to the electrode, that's pre-attached. Power goes in here, this goes to your power adapter. This socket is for the crocodile clip, tweezers or whatever connectors you're using. This connector, uh, note it only goes in one way, this powers and controls the LCD screen. This pre-attached 6mm silicone hose connects to your ergon gas cylinder, show you that in a moment. Uh, I got this from my welding supplier and I just asked them for an ergon cylinder with a regulator to give me an adapter for a 6mm hose. So this is the setup here. You can see the gas cylinder, the valves on top with the regulator. This is a little adapter and that goes into the hose and straight into the back of the control unit. Simple as that. Any local welding supply store will sort you out with a bottle and a regulator. Really easy. Now, ergon isn't fuel and it isn't an oxidising agent like oxygen. In fact, it's the complete opposite. Ergon is an inert gas and it doesn't react to anything. So this helps to prevent the metal from oxidising and it also creates the right conditions to create the spark that you need. So, just open the valve, just part way, it only uses a tiny little puff of gas each time it finds a pulse. Insert your electrode into the holder, like this, uh, and you'll notice there's a little measurement on the side here. And when you put the cap back on, you want just a few millimetres protruding from the end. Switch it on, wait for it to bleep, and activate it. So let's weld something. We'll start with the thing that everyone wants to weld, and that's a jump ring. So this is 1.2mm sterling silver. It's nice and clean, but it's not been treated in any way. There's no chemicals or there's no flux on it. So we attach the crocodile clip to it. 
But before we start welding, we need to set the power. So at the front of the control unit, you'll see this big touchscreen. Might look scary, but it's so simple to use. The power ranges from 5 watts per second to 30 watts per second in 2.5 watt increments. So that's 11 power settings you can choose from. And this affects the size of the weld spot. So on the lowest setting, for example, 5 watts, the spot is going to be less than one millimeter, so very, very fine. Great for welding tiny little chains and stuff. And then when you set it up to 30 watts, this will give you a spot of approximately 1.5 millimeter diameter. And so again, that's going to depend on the material that you're welding, but a bigger spot and more deeper penetration into your metal. So all you do is touch the screen to increase or decrease the power. Experiment with a few scraps and you'll soon learn what works best for you and the materials that you're working with. So I know, for example, that with this jump ring, I need to use a setting of 15. So hold the piece still and just touch it to the needle. And once it touches the needle, this creates a circuit. The solenoid moves the needle backwards, just a few millimeter, and as it does so, the unit creates an electrical pulse. This creates a small arc and it creates a small bolt of lightning. And it's this that heats and welds the metal instantly in the blink of an eye. As it does this, the shutter blinks as well to protect your eyes. And so it all happens in a flash of a second. And each time you touch the electrode, it will do it again and it will weld. So it creates a pulse, fires the gas, creates a little weld and activates a shutter, all in the blink of an eye. So nothing to be nervous about, uh, you can do this with your bare hands, it's not going to shock you, it's perfectly safe. Um, because it's so fast and precise, your piece doesn't tend to get very hot. So you can do this with both hands, uh, you don't need any clamps or stands, and the important thing is, you've got both hands free, very important. If you look at the jump ring here under a close-up, you can see that there's no chemicals or borax on it. You might get a little bit of soot, but all you do is just wipe it off with a fiberglass pen and you're done. Simple as that. You can see here that the metal has completely welded. And remember too, that we aren't using any solder here. We're just welding metal to metal, so it's a pure metal weld. Because of the precision, you can weld very, very tiny little things, such as trace chains and tiny little bolt rings, items that would otherwise be difficult to solder with a torch. So let's try something bigger. This is a large, thicker, square jump ring, sterling silver. So for this one, we're going to turn it up a little bit more, so we get more penetration and more heat into the metal. Attach the crocodile clip again, and just touch it to the electrode click and we're done. For larger items one spot might not be enough but you can simplify a few hits from different sides to create a much stronger and cleaner weld. Increasing the power makes the weld spot bigger but it also penetrates deeper into the metal too and likewise a small low power spot will be shallower and it won't penetrate as deep. But what do we do when the metal is too thick to penetrate, even on the higher setting? Well, this is a little bit of a more advanced technique, but the method is to file a V-shaped groove along the joint using a square or triangular file. We can start with just a couple of light spots to hold the piece together, and then we can now go along the bottom of the groove to create a weld. For the second pass, we don't really have any more material in the top of the groove, but we can add some. And to do this is simple. This is a thin piece of sterling silver wire. Now, obviously you match the wire to the metal that you're working on. Hold the wire at 45 degrees, just touching the metal, and weld the two at the same time. When you hit, a little spot of the wire will melt into the gap. So continue just a few hits to fill the groove. It does take a little practice to master this fill technique, but it is worth learning as it allows you to repair larger items like gem set rings that you don't want to get hot. I normally leave the solder slightly proud and then sand and polish it afterwards. 
But here we can use the welder to help create a much smoother surface if we wish. And in order to do this, we need a blunt electrode. So it's a great idea to keep one blunt and one sharp. Here I'm just giving a quick touch with a diamond wheel on my Dremel. If you've not got one of these, just a piece of emery paper flat on your bench will do, and you're just taking the sharpness off it. And what this does is it gives us a slightly more blunt, a more dispersed, slightly superficial spark. So it's wider and softer. Turn down the power and we can use this to just melt and smooth out the surface. So this is a particularly useful technique on repairs where it might be difficult to get polishing tools into a tight, tiny space. This welder is also great for earrings. These little posts can be very tricky to solder and repair and even more of a problem when you repair an item which might have stones in it. Well check this out, just a couple of quick welds and there you go, one stud earring. I just pop it in a tumbler, clean it up and it's done. Personally I make a lot of chain mail and in most cases it doesn't really need soldering but some designs do. My necklace here for example, this was soldered with a torch and it took several weeks. Solder, pittle, rinse, then do it again, solder, pittle, rinse. But with the welder I can simply assemble the whole chain and then weld the rings all in situ in one go. Because of the pinpoint accuracy of the Orion, even a dense close structure like this doesn't present any problems. But this will be very difficult to solder with a flame. So for me this thing is a real time saver. Because of this precision and lack of a flame, we can now solder components very close to stones without having to remove them. So let's say we want to add some material to the tip of a claw. We can just add a piece of wire at 45 degrees like before, give it a quick blast and as before the wire is melted and added onto the end of the piece. Likewise if you need to totally replace a claw you can simply add a piece of wire or burr Give it a couple of light spots to fix it in place and you can now cut and bend your claw as normal. But the difference is we can do this without removing the rest of the stones. So far I've been showing you silver and gold but recently due to the price of precious metals people are starting to make jewellery out of other metals like copper, brass and stainless steel. I recently came across a problem with these copper hearts that I made. I wanted to solder little jump rings closed at the top. But what do I solder copper with? Now some people just use silver solder and that works fine but it does leave a bright silver line so it looks a bit ugly. I did buy some copper solder wire but again because it has other metals mixed in with it to reduce the melting point you never quite get that precise copper colour match. But with the welder here we don't need any solder. As you can see quick and simple joins copper to copper. A quick buzz with a polishing burr and the joint is totally invisible. Likewise costume jewellery, copper jewellery, glasses, watches, stainless steel, brass. Most metals can be welded without the need for any special solders or chemicals. So I can now repair items that I just simply couldn't touch before. The big advantage for me is that I do a lot of repairs and refurbishments. So attaching junk rings, reattaching earring posts, adding pendant bills and fixing small chains. All jobs which the Orion excels at and all jobs that can be done with a minimum of force, minimum of clean up with no solder and no flux required. So for me it's the perfect companion for me and I feel that any small studio where you're making or repairing a lot of items then this will very quickly pay for itself in time and materials. For any jeweller of course, bench space is always at a premium. Um, so look at the footprint too, it's tiny and it will sit anywhere. You can even put the control box under the desk if you wish. The only running cost is electricity and an argon cylinder. But remember, it only uses a tiny little puff of gas when it makes a spark. So a tank will last an eternity. Doesn't use oxygen, fuel or any special chemicals. And at 30 watts, it's just like turning on a death lamp. The only really replaceable part is the tungsten electrode needle, which, to be honest, it's just a couple of pounds. So once you've got it, just plug it in and away you go. And it should give you many years of happy, accurate welding. 
So guys, I hope you found that interesting. I have to say, I am by no means an expert on this. I've had this a few weeks now, and so, as with any new tool, I'm still getting used to the new techniques and the new ways of working with it. So, a little bit more practice and playing around with it, just to get a feel for it yet. But even so, I hope I've given you a little bit of an overview of what these machines are, how they work, and hopefully you can understand where one of these might fit within your own business and the work that you do. If you want more information, then check out the website below. Loads of great videos, tutorials, explanations, and all the information that you need on it. Also, look out for a new video of mine coming soon. I'm going to look at one of the big units with a microscope and a computer on it as well, so you can see the comparison. This particular unit is an entry-level model, so do check out the price, because I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. It's a lot more affordable than you might think. So... Happy welding. I've been Dave Wilson. Thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon on the next video. Bye for now.